So what is Legionella? Legionella is everywhere. It's basically an aerobic bacteria. It's a rod-shaped, gram-negative aerobic bacteria. There's over 17 different strains of it. Uh, serial group one is the one that has caused about 90% of the deaths or our sicknesses on that. And it is the causative agent of Legionella's disease and Pontiac fever. It's a pneumonia. Okay, basically it's a pneumonia. Uh, so if you have a pneumonia, it could be Legionella, or might not be Legionella, but most of the times, or a good portion of the time, it could be Legionella related. It most commonly affects those who are, who are elderly, smoke, and or have respiratory problems, people who have weak immune systems from disease like cancer, diabetes, kidney failures, uh, heart transplant centers, uh, where people's immune systems are down. So that, that makes kind of sense. If, if your immune systems are down, you, you're likely going to contract um, a sickness anyway. Um, unfortunately, each of becomes the, the final sickness uh, because of the way it reacts. Um, it's one of the three most frequent causes of pneumonia. They can now test Legionella in the bloodstream. So sometimes hospitals now, if people are coming in sick, they will actually test you to see if you have Legionella to see if it's hospital acquired or communicable acquired. So there are people that come to hospitals that already have Legionella fluid and pneumonia. Okay, Legionella infects and lives within protozoa and can thrive in biofilms. We talked about the sessile bacteria and how they grow the biofilms. That's exactly where they live. So we know that we can control the sessile bacteria, the anaerobic slime forming bacteria, to a good rate, the chances of Legionella are slim to none. So that's why we have those metrics lined up. Okay, just to give you some electronic shots of, uh, of Legionella. Legionella is actually this rod shape right there, and they're actually in the environment. They don't do very well in the environment by themselves, but a lot of the amoebas and protozoa actually think they're food sources, so they go out and they grab them. They think it's a food source. Once they get in the cell, Okay, they start replicating, and eventually they just take over the host cell. The host cell explodes and releases it back into the environment. And so that's how they get in the environment. The way it gets into, I don't know if I have a slide, I don't have a slide. The way they get into the human host is they do it by water vapors. Okay, so they're actually part of a water vapor. You inhale the water vapor in some way, shape, or form, and it's a respiratory disease, and that's how it affects us. So for all the people that work around cooling towers, you're probably a little more susceptible to get Legionella. Okay, because of that. So that's why we want to control the cooling towers and where they are and how they're controlling the biologicals. As you said, the steam plume come out the top, where's all that water vapor going? Going out into the community. So where does it thrive? Legionella basically thrives between 68 and 115 degrees. What's the temperature inside cooling towers? Okay, perfect. Um, we also have some people that have get contract Legionella from the drinking water in hospitals. So that's why they do a lot of superheating or they have hot water systems. Because as you see, if you get above 140, 150 degrees, it really doesn't exist. We understand Legionella. There's plenty of documentation. Uh, there's Cooling Tower Institute's guide, OSHA, ASHRAE, uh, State of Maryland, Wisconsin Protocol. We understand all this. The problem is how are we going to manage the facility to make sure we minimize our risk to Legionella? Now there's a new publication. If you guys are into ASHRAE, and you guys follow ASHRAE, there's a new publication coming out, new standards of 188. And I urge you to go look at it online. It's for public draft review right now. It's not a standard, but it's gonna be heading a standard. And there's some issues with this. Uh, some issues that I don't necessarily believe in, but it, it's coming your way. Basically, they're gonna require hazard analysis to be conducted annually in all buildings, all commercial buildings. The hazard analysis and critical control point HACCT method will be used. In other words, you would need to have someone trained or you need to hire somebody that is trained in this method to come in and actually do a risk assessment or analysis of the building and the water systems. It's actually a pretty intense 12-point risk plan that will be developed and has to be a final report with specific criteria will need to be developed. This is what's coming out. You might want to take a look at it and read and prepare yourselves for it. Because um, if it is, it's going to be an added cost. It may be an unduly added cost, but it is something that they're going to do to help uh, minimize the risk of Legionella in buildings. So what we need to do is really manage the risk. We need to know where they live, where they thrive, and how they travel. So in other words, where they grow, how are they going to transport themselves to the host, which is us, okay? And then and how do we stop that process? One of the things you have to look at is the design location of your cooling towers. So many cooling towers are located on the roofs. We just came from one, okay? Not that I'm saying that that's bad or good, but where are the air intakes of the building? You know, I was at a hotel once, and their air intake was right next to the cooling tower. Okay, that's not a good, because you have a lot of vapor in that area, it sucks it right into the building, 
and that goes right into the guest room. So you certainly need to make sure you understand where the air intakes are and relative to the discharge of the cooling panels. If they are close, then you might have to make sure and beef up your biocide program and make sure you're doing a really good job because you could be bringing that water vapor into the building itself. Make sure you do your biological testing. Uh, what we have seen, okay, is that there's very little risk. In fact, we haven't seen any instances, I don't want to say that it will never happen. When you keep your bulk water bacteria below 10,000, your surface bacteria below 50,000, and you really don't normally see Legionella because you're controlling the entire diverse population down. So the risk and the amount of Legionella present is so minor, it's not necessarily a risk anymore. Almost in every application, the biologicals were off the roof. That makes sense. You have Legionella becomes very high, therefore the risk becomes high. Um, so make sure you're doing some form of biocide program on that. Um, the, the program you saw today up on the roof does not feed biocides. I'm not saying that's bad or good, okay? But it's not a, it's not a conventional program and therefore, I'm not sure there's a lot of really publications by CTI, OSHAs, and all that stuff on that. So you need to make sure that your risk is minimized because of that. Um, so if you're, if you're operating outside the boundaries of conventional uh, chemistries and programs, you certainly need to make sure you protect your investment and your risk. Okay, what about testing? Okay, we have the ability to test for Legionella. We can test the serial group. We can test down to one bug. One bug, we can, we can identify one bug in a sample, okay? That's how good the testing is. So the question is, should I test or not test? If I test and I find Legionella, what is the risk to the building? Because that becomes theoretically public documentation for any legal ramifications. Some people choose to say, look, I want to test it, I want to find it, and I want to kill it, okay? Other people say, if you search hard enough, you will find it everywhere in the environment, right? So if you search hard enough, you'll find it. So should I not test knowing I'm gonna find it? Or should I not test and follow best practices? Either way, it's not a bad methodology. It's a personal preference on that. If you do decide to test for Legionella, okay, which we would recommend doing it, if it's there, just, just, just deal with it. You've gotta make sure you have a plan in place so when you find it. So when you find it, there are certain protocols you need to find to or basically eradicate it, retest and validate that you've done something and make sure you document all that. I hate to say that, the legal system kind of takes over a little bit in this process because if someone were to get sick, you know, in the building um, or in a hospital or a university or whatever it might be, and it's found out that you had Legionella and you weren't following best practice, you kind of open yourself up to a risk on that. So if you do decide to do testing, please make sure you have a risk plan in place to make sure you do something if you find it, because you probably will find it. If you don't do it, my recommendation is follow the protocol. Make sure you follow the uh, best practices for biological control and document on that. Any questions about Legionella? Thank God this is not a hospital environment because they could go on for about two hours. <laughs> um, it's not. It's nothing to be scared about necessarily. I mean, the people in this room are healthy. It's, it's easy treatable by antibiotics, just like any other sickness. Um, it just affects people that have low immune systems, and it is. Uh, it's, it's deadly. Then we put that respect on that. 